quotes. People say them, others listen to them, and throughout the long history of fiction there have been a lot of great ones. Today we're going back to the Light Music Club to take a look at the quotes of its most prominent member. Young, dumb, and full of cum passion, Yui Hirasawa is a real crowd pleaser. Kaon's biggest strength lies in the way it pulls you into its mundane setting and makes you like it. Not everybody enjoys these pure slice of life type shows, but I feel like anyone can appreciate how well this one plays the part. And Yui's high energy only serves to help the show shine a spotlight on all the simple pleasures in life. Keep in mind that there are spoilers ahead, please start thinking about your favorite Yui quote because I'm going to be asking you for your answer at the end of the video. And as always, we have our three categories. The meme squad for funny stuff and inside jokes, the wild cards for lesser known yet still impactful quotes, and the heavy hitters for the big boy stuff. Speaking of which, here's a quote I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you all. The quote I picked for Haruhi last time was not your favorite. It didn't even come in second. I thought it would be fun to see if I could change that for this video, but knowing how popular this quote is and knowing that I'm not going to pick it, the deck is already stacked against me. So here's the plan. I'm putting this quote up first as bait. Sure, it perfectly represents the fun-loving, simplistic nature of the show, beautifully tying its whole point together in four short words, but forget about that. I'm betting that by the end of this video, you'll find a quote that you appreciate even more. So yeah, only time will tell if I pulled this off, or if I'm gonna get my lunch money stolen from me at school for being a dumb baby who loses on the internet. For now though, let's talk about getting a passport. It's annoying, it takes like 700 years, and you have to pay money if you want it done faster. Getting a passport, doing taxes, class, there are a lot of things that I can only associate unpleasant feelings with. I'm sure that a lot of you are the same, but but let's hear how Yui handles a frustrating situation like this. <laughs> Oh, I see. She takes that negativity out back and shoots it. This, to me, shows off a very special part of her character. No matter the situation, she's always having a good time. It's the kind of optimism that most could only dream to have, and honestly, I think it's an attitude that makes the show itself all the more compelling. Yui and the others are over here messing with Mio, causing her to repeatedly fail to take her passport photo. And this is the moment when I realized I was having fun watching a fictional character do the most boring thing you could ever do in real life. Either I'm insane, or I've been infected by this overwhelmingly carefree attitude. The good news is, my sleep paralysis demon said I was all good, so we can assume it's the latter. I have to admit, it's a mindset that I don't mind having for myself, and the best part is, it's contagious for the other characters too. Our first heavy hitter takes us to the summer festival, where the group spends the day watching a ton of bands perform for thousands of festival goers. Once they they turn in for the night, they all lie down on the grass, staring up at the stars, listening to music still being played in the distance. Ritsu says that everybody they saw today was amazing, and both Mio and Mugi agree with her. Then Yui speaks up, saying, yeah, those professionals who have been doing this for years were pretty good, but we're better. What in the goddamn? She's immediately questioned by Ritsu, who understandably wants to know why she thinks this, and then something strange happens. After Yui is done saying their aura as a band is what makes them special, Mio pops up and wholeheartedly agrees with her. And then Azusa joins her and says, yeah, those guys sucked, we're way better. This is not how Mio and Azusa typically treat Yui's foolish comments. The dynamic between these three is the classic tale of the funny man, the straight man, and the identical twin sister who is also playing the straight man. Yui says something dumb, and then it's up to these two to scold, correct, or ignore her. Yet, here they are, dropping their serious demeanor and allowing themselves to get lost in Yui's more irrational view of the world. To me, this quote represents Yui's role for the band. She's the glue that holds everybody together, encouraging those who need it and always maintaining a high level of energy because that's just the kind of person she is. I'm sure we'll see more of this later, but I gotta say, I do find it amusing that Yui can go on and on about the aura of the band while simultaneously using her own to lift up these two buzz kills to her level. And while this next quote is another meme squad one, I like to keep this serious attitude going. It's a nice change of pace from what you'd expect from Yui, so hopefully for just a little while longer we can- Huh. 
You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this series suffers a heart attack in the near future, seeing as its diet consists solely of airheads. See, Yui is an eccentric one, go figure. Every time you think you've seen everything, she hits you with a whole new kind of what the hell are you doing? Why did she want to get slapped by a wad of cash? I don't know. I don't think anyone ever will or should. What's important here is that spontaneous weirdo energy behind all of her actions. It's a quality that once again works wonders for turning the mundane activities in the show into something that's worth watching. But we're still missing something. The aspect of her character that works hand in hand with her eccentricity, the fact that she's really stupid. Now I know I said this about Nagasa and I kind of said it for Haruhi, but Yui is on a whole other level. This entire category should be filled with quotes that show her being stupid just to drive the point home, but after tossing and turning over it, I think I found the perfect example. Alright, before we proceed, I'd like to congratulate you all for making it this far in the video, because now you get to participate in this little game show of sorts that I'm thinking of starting. The rules are simple, I'll explain as we go. First, I need you all to take a look at these two images. Take every little detail in, pause the video if you need some extra time. Got a good idea of what these objects are all about? Good. Now, I want you to name one fucking similarity between the two. I think it's safe to say that Yui is unlike anything we've seen so far in these videos, but I don't want you all to think that her brain is completely worthless. In fact, I'm guessing all that extra room upstairs got quickly occupied by an overwhelming amount of affection. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody more willing to throw themselves at a loved one than this girl. It's something you get used to while watching, but every now and again she does something so sickeningly heartwarming that I can't help but feel secondhand embarrassment for everyone involved, and I don't think there's a better example for this than the song she wrote for her sister, which she named U and I with the letter U and I because when you put it together, it spells her name. <sighs> Just being able to see you smile means everything to me. I want to be with you forever and a day. Whenever I close my eyes, I could see your smile shining brightly. You're too good to me. I would like to take all my thank yous and send it to you through this song. These are either the words of a crazy person or somebody so genuine that they never feel the need to hold back their feelings. You can make the argument that Azusa's song belongs here instead because it's just as if not more impactful, but that was a joint effort between the four original members. This song was all Yui, or at least that's what I thought until my brother kicked down my door and told me in the manga her sister writes like half the song for her which is super weird knowing what's in it. The anime doesn't show any of that though, because it's actually good. It allows you to see the creation of this song as a glimpse into what Yui is capable of when she's doing something important for someone she cares about. And while I might be squirming around in my seat while reading the lyrics, I still respect it tremendously. Good luck finding someone who's willing to be this unapologetically open in front of so many people. Speaking of open, do you guys know what the opposite of that word is? Yes, that's the transition I'm going with. Some of you might be scratching your heads wondering how this quote fits in, but to be honest, it's just here because it's my favorite joke from the show. During my time as a watcher of anime, I found that KyoAni is exceptional at comedic timing. Almost every show I've seen contains several moments that made me laugh because the way they executed the punchlines were flawless. I mean, take a look at this scene. Yui is having a hard time filling out this paper where she has to decide her career path in high school because Japan Japan is weird. Nodoka says not to think too hard about it, so Yui suggests that she could be a florist. Azusa is all like, yeah, that would actually work well for you. Then flash forward to her actually doing the job. This lady asks her a question that she doesn't know the answer to, then boom. Fucking bankrupt. <laughs> Nodoka and Azusa's comments make the audience think that this is actually a good fit for her, and the first few seconds of her in the shop make her look pretty confident in the role. This is then contrasted by her failing to answer the first question a customer asks her, and then it's escalated by the immediate closing of the store. I think it's brilliant, but I guess if you're the type who's more into character development, this next quote will suit your fancy. I talked about how Yui is sort of the anchor for the group, the one who keeps energy high and doubt low. But 
the side of this that I haven't covered is when problems crop up within the group. Somebody's gotta be there to try to keep everybody happy, and based on how things have been going, I'm guessing you already know who that person is. Early on in Season 2, Ritsu grows discontent with her instrument and starts to look for something new to play. Mio thinks that's a dumb idea because of course she does, but Yui is just like, here's my guitar, go for it. When she gets home, she sits in a dark corner in order to think about what she can do to help. She comes up with these stupid plans like putting the drums in front of everyone else during performances and occasionally shooting glances at Ritsu while performing so she feels less lonely back there. She spent god knows how much money on all this useless junk hoping it would help and once it's all turned away she doesn't even care. In the end, Ritsu gets over her slump and gets right back to loving the drums. But while she's explaining this to everyone, Yui interrupts her and says that even though they're all in the same band, everybody has their own role and their own way of thinking. This whole video I've kind of been building up these two sides of Yui, the dumb brain part of her and the surprisingly attentive part of her. I'm doing this because I think this dichotomy is what gives her depth. She isn't just a moron, she's able to pull herself together when she wants to. She has passions, friends, and family that inspire her to try harder, just like anybody else. It's quotes like these that blur the line between fiction and reality with this cast for me. Seeing her try to tackle Ritsu's problem in her own weird little way provides the audience with an abundance of expertly crafted bits of characterization. And after 40-something episodes of this kind of writing, it's no wonder that these characters feel like real people by the end of it. And if that's not enough, they gave her realistic worries and problems. My kryptonite. In the first episode of the show, Yui is aimless. She hasn't figured out which club she wants to join after two weeks of being in school, much to the chagrin of those around her. Even when she has a goal like get to school on time, she constantly stops and does some meaningless task because she was never that invested to begin with. But as I'm sure you all know, season 1 ends with her making the exact same trip she made in episode 1, but this time with direction. Everyone likes to point out the differences, like how she doesn't fall on her ass on the way out the door, or how she doesn't stop for anything like she did previously, and that's good stuff. But I'm much more attached to her monologue during this scene. She talks about how she didn't know if she was going to find anything she wanted to do all throughout high school, admitting that she was worried about growing up without doing anything meaningful. But then she addresses her from the past directly, saying, Hey me, the me from that day. Don't you worry, you'll soon find what you can do, what you can really dig, the very important place for me. And as much as I'd like to let you hear her say it herself, she takes like 17 breaths in between sentences all while a copyrighted song blares in the background. I'd rather not get this video killed right from the get-go. But anyways, for me, this quote resonates strongly. I'm at an age where I need to make serious decisions about where I want to go in life, and the uncertainty of it all is just about as scary as I thought it would be. Sure, I'm taking a lot of steps in the right direction, and yeah, I have well over a year to set myself up for this, but it's pretty hard for me to think about this stuff and not worry, even if it is irrational. Yui's whole thing is a bit of a microcosm of this, seeing as she's just in high school. I can't say I'm not envious of the confidence she displays in her chosen path in this scene. It's something I hope I can have several years from now, and it's really uplifting to see somebody else obtain that level of conviction. But enough about me. I I know I'm not going to sell you all on this quote with anecdotes alone, so check this out. Every quality of Yui that I praised in this video happens to be in this quote. Her ability to pull herself together when something really matters to her is shown when she runs right to school without getting distracted. Her deep levels of affection and empathy were on display when she attempts to pacify the doubts her past self was feeling. Her stupidity comes in when she forgets her guitar on the day of the biggest performance she's ever had. Her eccentricity when she went to go grab her guitar even when a replacement was available because she doesn't want to play any guitar but her own, and her optimism when she makes the entire trip there and back without getting down on herself because of her current circumstances. Wrap that all together with the message and the conclusion of her character arc from the first season and I can't see someone wanting anything more out of one of her quotes. It's definitely my favorite, but hey, what do I know? Last time I had you all vote on your favorite Haruhi quote and mine got completely eviscerated. 
Ed. Haruhi's quote about how insignificant her and Kion's existences are came out on top. It's one of the few times we get real insight into why she does the things she does, so I totally get why so many of you chose it. Massive thank you to all of you who voted. My favorite is currently sitting in third place, making my record 1 to 1. Let's see if we can change that for the better with this video. In the description, there's a poll including every quote from this video, as well as an other option in case your favorite wasn't included. Please go vote if you have something in mind, and also make sure that I actually win this time. If you don't like the description's stupid face, there's also a pinned comment down there too. So yeah, be sure to check it out and vote. Yui is a dumbass, Kaon is cool, see you all next time.